Hi, I just felt like doing a random intermezzo. My regular show for Tuesday is uh, is still on as scheduled. So I'm going to do weekly shows every Tuesday at 8 p.m. UTC plus two West European time. Uh, but I thought, you know, I just feel like uh, maybe interacting with the audience and answering some questions. So let's see if some people are going to come online or not. And I hope the music isn't too loud because I usually have problem setting up the right volume for the music, you know. So today we've seen uh, the interview with Putin. Nothing really interesting came out of that. Uh, the Putin interview was just a two hour long history session justifying what Putin is doing. I think he's largely right though. That's not the issue. The thing with Putin is that uh, I get the impression he's also a globalist, right? He also wants to have the rules based order. He mentioned even uh, Elon Musk's Neuralink chip that they want to drill into your skull. And his response to that was, oh, well, you know, we just need to regulate it. We just need more rules. He doesn't say we need to ban transhumanism. That's sad. Where are the powerful leaders in our world who will stand up and say, we're going to ban transhumanism? We're going to stop this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to transform human beings into human termite colonies as our real ruling elites in this world seem to want. We're not going to do that. This is my impression. After all, my whole, after a lifetime of thinking about this, like, what is, who are these elites and what do they want? What do they want? A termite colony. They want to have a planet full of totally obedient humans. Uh, and if people won't obey because they have their own religious beliefs and their own ethnic feelings, uh, then we'll just implant neural links in them or turn them into cyborgs or turn them into a Terminator robot or a, or a Robocop robot, right? And if that doesn't work, then we'll just replace them with robots altogether. What, what do we need these people for anyway? If we can have robots doing what our humans do, then we'll just switch to robots. The ruling elites then, in my view, are absolutely immature people. They're deeply insecure. That's why, after all, they want the rules-based order. Because if they could get everybody to follow their rules, which are always in their benefit, then... Uh, all of a sudden, uh, they win, right? Then they feel secure. They need the rules-based order. So the whole idea of globalism is motivated by uh, elite people's insecurity over the fact that they might lose their wealth. And you know what? They're going to lose their wealth anyway. And even if they do manage to get humanoid robots or cyborgs or whatever, that's just going to fail. Yeah, well, what I think is that the new world order is not coming. It's not going to be materialized. They won't be able to do it. Eventually, people are just going to get so fed up with working so hard for so little. Why would we keep serving our elites? And then they come up with robots and AI. And you're going to find out that AI has no intelligence and the robots are going to break down. I used to own a mountain bike. And if I would go for, uh, go for rides in the, in the wind or the rain or sometimes even in the wintertime, Especially if it had snowed, my bike was practically destroyed after one hour of use because the the snow would, like snow and ice, man, that really, really rusts your chains and your discs so quickly. You honestly believe that we can have robots walking through weather, snow and mud? No, man. These robots are going to break down quicker than a mountain bike and a mountain bike needs maintenance almost every time you use it for an hour, you know? It's not going to happen. There's not going to be this new world order. The only thing that's going to happen now is we reached a peak with 8 billion people, 9 billion people, 10 billion people. And that's it. It's just all going to come crashing down. And we need to prepare for that. We need to know what we are going to do when the global economy collapses. What we're going to do is we're going to return to, in Europe at least, to pastoralism. So we're going to have our meat and dairy. But we will have a lot fewer people. The cities are not going to survive. People live in the big cities. They're all going to starve. It's impossible to feed them, right? It's impossible to heat their homes with central heating. The energy won't be there anymore, right? So we got to prepare for this. Prepare for, position us in such a way that we will survive the collapse. That means, you know, learning how to grow food and, you know, do pastoralism, raise cattle, you know, turn milk into butter and butter into yogurt or whatever, or the other way around. 
all these skills will come in handy, the real survival skills where we will simply return living to, to living closer to nature. This whole idea that the world is just going to keep advancing, uh, it's just total nonsense, you know. It's just total nonsense. So my impression of these Jewy people is that they are simply extremely effeminate in their thinking, in their minds. They think like women do, and women want to be pleasers. Exactly, they please everybody, right? So this is the problem. You know, they want to please, uh, they want to be everything to everybody all of the time. That's the women's attitude. Whereas as a man, as a man, you would have a very different attitude. You would say to yourself, you know, I want to do what I want to do, even if people don't like it, even if people insult me, even if people are, you know, abusive or whatever. That's their concern. A man is, in principle, more confident than a woman. And so more confident, um, a more, comp more confident people with more confident leaders may be able to carve out a new path through history, namely away from globalism. We're going to break away from globalism. But this, of course, is what globalism's, globalists perceive as the greatest threat to their existence. Like it couldn't possibly get any worse, right? But we don't have to be afraid of that. Whatever they perceive as a threat is their problem. In the end, they won't be able to fight these threats anyway. So, so this is how I think is, is what's going on. The world slowly progressed toward this uh, globalist setup, right? With a certain type of people with small hats in charge of uh, pulling the reins, basically. But they are, what they are doing is they're building a feminine world, a female world where, where the leadership itself is very insecure. And the leadership itself only wants to please everybody. So when they made the West super diverse, for example, why did they do that? Well, they wanted to make the Western system, um, you know, they wanted to appease to everybody. They wanted to make the West a place uh, where everybody is welcome and everybody can be themselves. H how are you going to do that when you have Muslims and Christians fighting each other and you have black and white who don't like each other and you have rich and poor who don't like each other and you have all these different configurations of people opposing each other, right? Um, that's just not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. The only reason that motiv the only reason we still have peace in the West is because we have a conflict with Russia. If there were no threat to the Western system, people would relax. And people who want to relax, they wouldn't work so hard. Why would we have to work so hard? There's no threat. There's no war, right? And then they wouldn't spend as much, and the economy would die down very quickly. You would end up in a situation where uh, rivaling gangs, street gangs, tribes clans and so on families will be fighting each other in the streets in the big cities mostly uh, the big cities stand no chance people living in big cities especially in diverse big cities you stand no chance you're going to go down you, you you're going to go down the big cities are not going to survive it's impossible you know when they speak of overpopulation what do you think that what do you think that will lead to overpopulation does not lead to a stable plateau it leads to a collapse of 80% of the population. So we're going down to 2 billion or less people from the up from 8 billion. And those people, the ones that will die, will either be living in uh, the sort of urban areas that can no longer be maintained. So all the big cities are going to die out. And then the people who all that already live in poor, uh, poor territories, people who depend on the United Nations for their food supply, for example. So large parts of Africa and India are going to die out as well. They cannot be fed. They cannot be maintained. So that's the whole point, you know. Civil war coming to the U.S. Exactly. But what kind of civil war? It's not going to be Democrats against Republicans. It's going to be ethnic groups against each other. It's going to be... You, have, well, you will have like a dozen different kinds of black factions fighting a dozen different kinds of Hispanic factions, fighting a dozen, dozen different kinds of white factions. And in the end, uh, only very few people will survive that. Uh, you can already predict that the whites will will be driven further north where it's colder, right? Uh, and the blacks may seize like southeast of the USA. The Latino and Hispanics will have the southwest of the USA. But it will be the United States could literally return back to the way it was before the Europeans arrived, you know? There's just no way that uh, that this is going to work. But the same thing is true for Western Europe. Western Europe, Europe in general is 
overpopulated without fuel for heating and without uh, money for food and so on at least 500 million Europeans will not be able to live in Europe anymore that's also going to indicate a mass starvation event I just don't believe uh, uh, I just don't believe in, in progress anymore you know uh, someone asks like oh what divides people the answer is your families most people only care about themselves few people care about themselves and their families and almost no one cares about things like their whole race or their whole humankind so what divides people is their family once you start going hungry and you have a tiny little bag of food who are you going to share it with well, most likely you're going to eat it yourself maybe you'll share it with your brother and your cousin and your mom and your sister that's it you're not going to share it with strangers so that's how people are divided very quickly when you get hungry everything just falls apart there is just there is no such thing as society well maybe putin is one of the jq people huh? i noticed that in the putin interview he also mentioned that he just wants to regulate everything he's also a globalist you know it's all it's all a waste of time really right if you miss three days of food you'll be feral yeah uh, once upon a time, I, w I went hiking in eastern Germany. I had uh, I had a bottle of water. I, I emptied it. And then I, th I thought, oh, you know what? I'll refresh it wherever as soon as I can, right? And uh, I was walking for a couple of hours, got real thirsty, and no nowhere I could find water, right? And literally, I turned into Gollum. In just three hours of thirst, you are Gollum. And your water is your precious. <laughs> You are not going to give anybody anything anymore. I, you know, you turn into a basically uh, a potential murderer. You will murder for a drop of water when you go go thirsty. So that that's how quickly it goes. Hunger and thirst you know, are the end of human social uh, configurations. The end of society. Yeah, uh, I don't know. the The point with China is they depend heavily for their population sizes on the. On the rice cultivation indonesia as well and so on indonesia surprisingly has 600 million inhabitants so indonesia china those places they cannot move their populations if they tried to move their billions of people together to uh, europe impossible they would just starve here because we can't feed them we can't do rice cultivation in europe not on the scale that would be necessary you know and same in the north north america you probably won't be able to do rice cultivation there in the way that they do it in asia you simply can't these these populations are trapped there and will have to stay there forever if you can't feed them they will simply you know die and the way that the ancient egypt uh, sorry the ancient chinese emperors used to deal with people is you see china is a hydraulic society it means the government manages the flow of water and by diverting water from one province to another at state level you could literally starve a couple of hundred million people within a few days, or meaning they dehydrate them and they would die of dehydration. That's serious. That's how it really works in China. Because the rice fields require so much water for cultivation, you can literally kill people off by diverting water from one part of the empire to another. And so that has happened in the past. Uh, in some cases, even they built a new dam and an entire village got flooded. Or, or an, an entire region of villages got flooded because of the dam they built. So things like that happen all the time in China. It's part of their way of life. They're hydraulic societies. We don't really have that problem uh, in the West so much because we got rain in Europe. Yeah, someone spent three days without food and then you have less conscious thoughts. You're like, like an aisle pilot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how it is. You're just going to turn into a, a zombie. <laughs> Oh, you made it to a live of mine. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm just doing a sort of an intermezzo because my regular show for Tuesday is still on. I'm going to do them once a week. I just today, today I just felt like uh, having a little chat with my followers here and there, you know. What's up, you know? Hold on. Uh... I thought the Putin interview, Putin interview in general, didn't offer much inf information or insight about anything. Putin was very careful not to disclose certain things. Uh, at some point, 
Tucker asked him about uh, how the U.S. works, who makes the decisions in the United States. And Putin's like, well, we don't know. It's very hard because we have like, you have like the Democrats and the Republicans and you have like state level elections. And then and uh, well, it's so difficult to figure out. But of course, he couldn't say that it's just the CIA and uh, and a bunch of Jews. Yeah, He couldn't say that. Uh, of course, he knows. <laughs> of course, he knows. The future of food production will be done by hand. It's, there's not going to be all, all these all these uh, vertical farming or all these high tech farming things depend on high tech. They depend on raw material materials that have to be sourced around the world to create the machines and so on and the energy. It depends on fossil fuel. You know, a lot of agriculture today would not exist without oil or cheap gas because uh, you have machines. Tractors, for example, can do the work of a hundred men. Without tractors, you would need to hire a hundred men and and feed them again, right? So it all seems to, it, people uh, people who believe in progress call it the singularity. Oh, we're going toward the singularity, whatever they think that means. The fusion of all minds with everything, the acceleration of thought, strangeness, really. But I think we're never going to reach that point. It's going to collapse before that. That's just way more realistic to think about. Uh, don't assume the progress is going to keep progressing. It's just going to come to a, a very sudden end. Like when you're using Microsoft Windows and all of a sudden it goes boom, blue screen of death. That's what it is. It's just going to stop and you'll have to reboot. And this rebooting process might give us the opportunity to reformat society. That's what I think will happen here. Yeah, Tucker is probably also one of them. He's definitely CIA. I like the part where uh, Putin pointed out uh, to Tucker, like, hey, uh, I know you wanted to join the CIA when you were young. And, uh, I'm glad you didn't. Of course, that was tongue in cheek because uh, KGB master chef uh, Putin, of course, he knows that Tucker is CIA. Uh, all right, maybe knowledge about societal collapse was lost in the fires of the library of Alexander. Yeah, possibly. You know, they give us these stories in the Bible. You have the stories of the of the great flood, right? Whatever it refers to. Some people think that the Mediterranean Sea got flooded and the civilization that used to be there was drowned. But, you know, it is symbolic, right? It's all symbolism. And symbolically speaking, you know, how would people describe uh, the death of their world? You, know, you would describe it, you know, as, as though it were a great flood. Everything came to an end, really. Yeah, well, that's the point with Tucker. Why would he talk about interdimensional beings and so on, and UFOs? He is CIA. He's pushing this crap as well. If he were a serious human being, he wouldn't be talking about... You will not hear me talk about interdimensionals other than saying that I do not believe in that bullshit. You know? And that's the thing. Tucker is just... He's, he's on the roster, man. He's on the payroll. That's weird because a guy like Tucker is very wealthy. He has tens and tens of millions, many houses. He goes on these fishing trips where he books a, a private, uh, a private flight, a little, uh, a little airplane, small airplane. They fly out into some place in Canada. He goes fishing for a weekend. I mean, come on, what kind of a guy like that still feels feels the need to do work as a journalist? Unless you play a role in some kind of secret society where this is your this is your task, like you're going to be the journalist and Joey is going to be uh, the spy master, and then we're going to fuck the world over. That's what this is. You know? Can you talk uh, about your books and which ones to buy first and difference in topics? Okay. Uh, well, my book Revival of the West is my political book where I kind of give you my worldview. It's an attack on the idea of open society. Then I have another book called Behold the Wanderer. That's a novel. That's about an individual who loses, who lives in a big city, loses his reason to exist uh, and decides to join uh, an, an outfit called the Outcasts, uh, basically the rebellion, a rural rebellion who then embrace religion again and then they start fighting the cities and they destroy the city. It's a book about also anti-diversity and so on. And another book that I liked of mine is uh, Eternal Struggle, but that's a real philosophical work. Eternal Struggle is about uh, debunking the scientific uh, worldview. You know, 
these science people made you believe that everything in existence is matter in motion. Just that. What they don't tell you is that uh, it's probably more likely that our universe came into being from nothing as a mind, a thinking mind that you also might call God. You know? Do you think our five senses are the only tools in existence in detecting reality? Uh, no, not five, because if you look at, uh, uh, you know, uh, bats and they have sonar, right? And uh, also uh, dolphins have sonar. So there's always other kinds of senses that are imaginable. Yeah, it's diff I've been thinking about this for a while, right? You have like smell, touch, uh, sight, hearing, and taste. And then dolphins have sonar. And, and oh, and the bats have echolocation. But it's kind of a hearing too, right? It's kind of hearing. But um, maybe you got to translate these things into what they really do, you know? I came up with the following. Like, taste it warns you of what you should or should not consume into your stomach so your gut by the way your gut is another brain you have your brain brain and your gut that's why they speak of having gut feelings your gut is another brain why is the gut so important your brain brain processes words and thoughts and ideas right but your gut actually consumes part of the physical world food so it is through your gut that you are physically connected to the real world and whereas your head can often imagine totally fake fantastical things that aren't really there right so listening to your gut feeling will probably inform you more about what to do in your life uh, a lot of people of course are trained not to listen to this we are told that we should not listen to our gut feelings gut feelings are a bad thing right and you see how that goes they are literally locking it's like robots don't have gut feelings. Robots only have a brain, uh, a programmed brain. They don't have a gut feeling. Living things, human beings, have instinct or gut feeling because we literally feel through our gut whether something is right or wrong. You can feel sometimes when you go near somebody, hey, this is a bad person, and you feel that way about these people, but they're smiling at you, and, it's like, and you don't feel right about it. You just need to get away from those people. Listen to your gut feeling. That's my advice. Do, exa do the exact opposite of what you are trained to do. The whole schooling system is just, you know, the whole schooling system is uh, designed to make you uh, an obedient little robot for the, for the elite classes. No one cares about, you know, uh, about you. The elites see us as the disease. I saw a video on Twitter that they now finally admit at some, some kind of high level people admitting that, oh, the whole, uh, you know, big cough era from 2019 to 2021 or so. That it was, uh, they're overreacted and they overresponded. They shouldn't have done this. They shouldn't have locked the society down and blah blah. You know, it's just silly. What's the story with the bird that went extinct but came back? Well, there was this bird that went extinct due to a changing environment. And then um, later, when the environment changed back, like 800 years later, the bird re-evolved out of the remaining... So there's imagine there's many species of bird that are very similar. And this other bird, the missing one, re-evolved out of the others. Meaning that if white people would go extinct they potentially could be re-evolved out of the other humans that survive uh so that's the idea uh, and very rapidly so that really that's a very different take on evolution uh, that what they normally they normally tell you that this has to take millions and millions and millions of years right and when you go extinct you go extinct forever right that's how they tell you but it turns out you can just if polar bears would go extinct they might re-evolve from brown and black bears within uh, a thousand years they would be back and that's a very strange take on evolution because we we are told that it's supposed to take millions of years but apparently it can also be done very very rapidly school kills the soul definitely there needs to be incentives to have children yeah 
Well, we have an overpopulated world. Europe has higher birth rates than China, although migrants in Europe have a higher birth rate than the Europeans. The point not, is not so, so much, in my view, that we need to have 3 billion people living in Europe, but rather that we have a healthy 200 million. Right? It, to me, it's quality over quantity, but we're, we're, forcing, we're going over quantity, you know? So what are other characteristics? Wait, my comment section blew up. I'm trying to answer some people's questions here. Right. Here we go. What was the story? I was talking about that. So Tucker is controlled opposition, fulfilling his role as a as a de facto crypto J for the couple of, yeah, kind of, probably what he is doing, controlled opposition. So you see that there's, it's all fake. When Hillary Clinton comes comes out of bed telling you, uh, oh no, uh, blah, 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 Tucker is a, tra is a traitor or whatever, that's all fake. The whole hype is fake. They just need to keep fueling that anti-Russian hype to keep people motivated to keep working for the economy, right? Or Or else the Russians will be at our doorstep while they throw your young men in war in the meat grinder to kill them off. You know, it's insane. We, we don't need to go along with this anymore. Without foreign aid, the African birth rate would plummet. Exactly. I read in a report by the United Nations that uh, Africa imports two-thirds of its food from outside of the continent, half of that from the West. And Africans don't believe this because they say we got farms. Yeah, you got farms, but you don't have enough farms. Two thirds of your food comes from outside of uh, the continent. Without development aid, two thirds of African population would starve within a month. It's insane. It's really insane how, you know, how how we all rely on globalism and no one no one is preparing for the collapse. And that's what I'm trying to argue often. We should position ourselves in such a way that we can deal with the collapse so that it won't hit us so hard that the other people may be hit harder if we just prepare for it. You know? The world is overpopulated artificially also, yeah, because the West is propping up African birth rates. That's definitely true, yeah. So won't the hordes of Asia and Africa just overrun Europe? Yeah, but if they did that, if the large numbers of people from Asia and Africa came to Europe, what would happen to Europe? They would starve. There is no food. We can't feed them. We can't heat them. There are not enough homes for them. You can't, it's not like you can just sleep outside in Europe in the wintertime. You'll definitely freeze to death. So no, so no, it's... It's impossible. There's, there are limits to the population that Europe can carry. Now, you can work on technology to increase those limits. But the, when you do that, you, make, you become dependent on the technology. You become dependent on globalism. And then if something cracks in the global scheme of things, you're going to feel that. You're going to get hit hard. Thoughts on Asians. Yeah, Asians are Asians, you know. I've been to Beijing and Shanghai, Qingdao, Hong Kong. Uh, very interesting what they are able to do there. Very advanced stuff. They have their own great culture there. I always respected Chinese culture, you know, because they have so much philosophy going on there. You know, Eastern philosophy, Confucianism and so on. You can read up on it. So I've read a couple of books uh, by, by them about Confucius, for example, which I thought is all extremely interesting. So it's definitely uh, an advanced civilization. But then again, if you're talking about migrating, mass migrating tens and tens of millions of Asians to Europe, then it's like, what are you doing? Um, imagine it this way. Imagine if we would send 20 million white Germans to the Shanghai area era. Would you like that? Would you like to receive uh, 30 million white Americans from California arrive at, uh, you know, arrive at uh, Hong Kong or something? You don't, you don't want that, do you? No. Or, or, or if we send 50 million uh, white Europeans to to Japan or something. That's insane, right? Everybody would think that's wrong. Uh, flooding existing societies, you know? Everybody says that's wrong. So why would we do that, you know? East Asian countries have, have very low birth rates today. That's right, like 1.1 in China or so, very low. 
they're going to contract yes east asia china and they're all going to have the same problem the only place on earth really booming is central africa but they are already reaching their limits their their limit their capacity is limited because like i just said they can't even feed their own people on their own continent they better watch out with their numbers because uh that's going to be catastrophic we was farmers and shit yeah nobody is happy with globalism yeah we've created a system dependent on technology to prop up our numbers worldwide and now you're stuck with that and the only thing the only thing i think elites are doing presently is to try to uh, use technology to oppress people so to reduce the birth rates uh anti-natalism that's why they promote the child-free lifestyle and the uh they promote the uh uh you know gay marriage because those things don't produce children right and and so on and so forth and al although they still promote migration into the west why would that be it's like a sort of bloodletting if you know that places like indonesia or india have a peak capacity populations that might cause a revolt there and people might not want to sell their resources to the west anymore so there's all sorts of reason why the elites always seem to favor immigration but only in their own benefit at the expense of everybody else of course yeah globalist system has created an insanely vulnerable dynamic yeah yeah stop killing the white farmers yeah right right Explain why you believe active clubs are NATO honeypots. Yeah, well, why don't you believe that? You know, there was a there was a a, a real a real right wing group in Germany called the Reichsbürger movement or the uh, sovereign citizen movement in Germany called Reichsbürgers. This was basically just twelve boomers on Telegram discussing w how they might do a coup if they wanted to do a coup against the German government. They were arrested by fifty guys in SWAT clothes. You know, SWAT teams of 50 guys uh, arresting these uh, these boomers. They're in jail now. They've been imprisoned. So you tell me, you, you think you can have an active club, 150 equally named active clubs, like Active Club Stockholm, Active Club Amsterdam, and so on. It's like a TEDx conference. Come on, that doesn't exist. If these were grassroots movements, they would not have the same name. And if they were real, they would not have bank accounts and their leaders would be in jail. They would have been swatted. It's just not real. If you want to do anything in this world, you will have to do it without bank accounts and without electronic communication. You'll have to meet people face to face in the woods or something, uh, you know, on a regular, say every every Saturday at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. We, we meet here, for, we'll, we'll pretend to play soccer or something in the woods. And then that's when we discuss together face to face without using electronic devices what we might do. And I think that's how the networks will have to be built. It's going to be a very strange, strange way forward. You know, the truckers in Canada, if you donated $25 to the truckers in Canada, you could have your bank account assets frozen. So you tell me, why would the active clubs be real? They're white supremacists. According to Joe Biden, that's the greatest terrorist threat in our modern time. Then why aren't they shutting them down? Why aren't they freezing their bank accounts? because it's the CIA and NATO behind it. They're organizing this. They did the same thing in Ukraine where they got right-wing men who are sensitive to this and they dropped them in war and they're all dead now. So, yeah. Did you hear about the actions, blah, blah? Yeah, well. They're suddenly supporting the right because they realize they need us for profit wars. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Left-wing men generally are not going to fight wars. They think they can use the right-wing men because they are disaffected, disenfranchised, uh, hurt. They feel discriminated against, abandoned by their society, hated by their people, hated by their government. And so they think, wow, we can fool them with, you know, dream worlds of white supremacy and get them to die against Russia. They're going to send you to war against Russia. So within a year or two, you're going to find out I was right. You know, they're going to kill you off. And we shouldn't do that. If anything, if, these, if you say these active clubs are real, they should be marching to the capitals and they should be kidnapping politicians if it were real. You know? But they're not real and they're not going to do that. They're going to fight Russia instead. They're going to be killed off in wars for globalism because that's the only thing they will be allowed to do. As soon as they do anything real, they will be in jail 
or they won't have money and they'll lose their jobs. This is how it is. We're going to have a holy war on Islam. It's inevitable in Europe. The way I see it, the war against Russia is absolute distraction. It's probably just meant to purge white men from existence, just like in the Second World War and the First World War. They just keep killing us off because why? Because we're most competent and therefore we are least obedient. We don't want to follow the rules of the global, of the rules-based order, you know? And so I think they're trying to distract us while, while our cities are literally being flooded with immigrants to the point where you have entire neighborhoods now with no white people in them, right? We have classrooms full of kids that are no longer, don't no longer look like us. Uh, we're being completely replaced. It's absolutely evil. It's not diversity. It is simply being replaced by a foreign population with their own ways. People who have never heard of Christ Christmas, people who will never send each other Christmas cards. Uh, it's simply a, an erasure of our culture in those area, areas. We have every right to be concerned about that and, and to do something about it. Uh, and the way I think we will do something about it eventually is we're going to cut loose from the cities. We're not going to send, you know, when globalism collapses, we're not going to send our food to the cities anymore, are we? See? Poland has been captured by the USA now, so. There will be a holy war on Islam in Europe this century. It's going to be extremely bloody. There's simply no other way. Yeah, Zionists are behind Ukraine. Yeah, of course. Cannon follower. Is Poland correct in their views on immigration? Well, Poland has been captured by the USA now, so they are also importing people now from Kenya and India and Pakistan because of the war effort. They need to build the war industry to fight Russia, right? So, uh, But they're going to send white men to die first, of course, and then you'll be replaced again. It's the same damn thing. It's so sad. You know, within just a few weeks after they overthrew the government in Poland, it was really a regime change, you know, just like at Maidan, the Maidan revolution in Ukraine. And these Polish people, only 17% of the Poles now now still support their government because the government already immediately rolled out this LGBT program to make kids gay and trans. It's just so sickening. You almost wish that that the Russians would invade Poland and save save the save the Polish people from from the American degeneracy. I watched a, a video yesterday by the Daniel Natal show on YouTube about the US being a nihilist empire. It tries to be everything to everybody. And in the result, it became nothing to no one. The United States uh, power tends to be largely fake. They're not really as powerful as they look. What, what they are good at, what the USA is good at, is their control of the media and the media narratives. But the United States does not have much real power. They do not have enough weapons and bombs, for example, to supply the Ukrainian soldiers with to fight the Russians. So that's a bit weird. Who's funding all of this? Can you make a video of all the books you have in your collection of which ones you suggest? Yeah, I might do that sometime. Yeah, babies born last year in the USA, 50% or so were white, probably less, but because they count they count certain uh, Latinos as white and certain Hispanics are white, right? So it's probably, as in white, white, it's probably lower than 50%, right? Yeah, what about European Muslims like Bosnians and Albania as well? They're not part of the EU yet, so, well, you know, uh, the, bad luck for them, you know, it, it's going to be a religious war and then, you know, you've chosen your side. Why are you thinking about night rise of active? Because active clubs are fake. It's ruled by the CIA and the, and, the, and the NATO designed to lure susceptible men in so they can kill you off in war. They're going to make you meat for the meat grinders. I'm trying to save your fucking life here. I don't want you to die. I want you to live in Europe. And that means we need to focus not on wars for globalism, but we focus on what we are going to do here. What you would really want, ideally now, is to work with the farmers' revolts, right? And then you have to overthrow the government. 
you literally have to start overthrowing the government. That's the aim. There's no other way. You can't make deals with globalists. They will never change their mind. They're globalists. They, they are ideologically motivated. So you can't defeat them uh, at the ballot box or in court. You can only defeat them in the real world. How do you feel about black Americans living in America? Well, you know, most black people actually still live, about 50% of them live in the southeast of the USA, where the old plantations used to be. So most of them never even left the plantations. That's true. In other states, they're just barely 8 or 10% of the population. So what I think might happen in a global collapse is that the blacks are going to move to the southeast of the USA. Uh, and uh, they will have their own, their own nation there, you know. It's just how it is. Yeah, the Active Club members are not globalists, but they are being organized by globalists. People find it hard to understand them. Right? You're being fooled. You're being tricked. Right, they downplay uh, the number of white people in some area. Uh, South America is a third white. Yeah, it's possible, yeah. Of course, there are l lots of white people in uh, Latin America. It glows, exactly. They glow in the dark. Well, yeah, an African-American state... It will be uh, a special case, yeah. If you would make them responsible for their own future, all of a sudden they will have to do everything themselves, yeah. Rather than piggybacking off of another racist civilization, right? You used to live without whites, yeah. Then you were hunter-gatherers, and then the whites made you more advanced, so... I don't hate anybody because hate, the word hate represents any strong emotional feeling and I don't have that feeling for anybody. So if you mean the word hate in the sense of dislike, it's also false. It's more like I don't see the fucking point in mass migrating millions of people all around the world all the time just for economic reasons. This harms literally everybody. The, the immigrants in the Netherlands are not happy. They always say that they are actually depressed, but of course they translate that into saying, oh, we're being discriminated, oh, we're being racially discriminated. What it really means is they're just depressed because life in the Netherlands is not as fun as it's supposed to be. It's not paradise. No one is, no one is really happy in these places. I'm just trying to look for usually, how do we improve the quality of our people? How do we get the best out of ourselves? How do we carve out a path toward the future where we can have our own people, our own culture, live with people who look like us and not be bothered by mass immigration? Especially if the mass immigration is caused by processes that we don't support. A lot of people say that, oh, if the West didn't bomb these nations, we wouldn't have immigrants. Yeah, but no one in the West supported these wars. Our leadership supports these wars, but we don't support the leadership. So it becomes a situation where we are being punished for something we didn't even want to do. And the, to turn that around, you would then, uh, I would argue, we deserve a place for ourselves. Some place in Europe, places in Europe where we can have our own nations again. I don't know if the present nations like Germany or the Netherlands will keep on existing. It may be that things will fall apart. And, but then other kinds of nations will rise again for our own people. So I definitely believe in a future for ethno-nationalism. Ethno-nationalism ethno -nationalism is, of course, the solution to a lot of problems. It's the solution to globalism. Ethno-nationalism means you will rely on your own people. That means the elites of the ethno-state will have to invest in their own people, in their own birth rates, in their own quality, training, education, ability, manufacturing, and so on, right? And people will rightfully feel proud of themselves if they know that their nation exists because of them, because of themselves, because of their actions, and not because of, because of some speculative interaction on the stock market, right? but because of your own effort. And this is so important to people. I think that is the future, you know? Yeah. 
do you think the West is more corrupt than Africa or Asia? Uh, yeah, because we have a lot more money going around. So in terms of volume, yeah, we're most corrupt. Doesn't mean I support that. I certainly don't support that. Okay, goodbye, Hamza. You can't say things like that. <laughs> yeah, we call it lobbying instead of corruption, yeah. But the, the corruption is, of course, ideological. We have ideological corruption. When we say that, oh, veganism is healthy now and meat is bad for you, that's a lie. Meat is not bad for you and veganism is not healthier than red meat. It's just not true. Uh, and then banning meat is total ideological corruption. You're, you, you are really harming people when they say that they can change their genders, for example. That's not true. You can't change your gender with surgery. That's just mutilation. You can wear a dress... I'm not forbidding anybody to wear a dress. If you want to be, uh, you know, Scottish men, they wear dresses. Ha, huh? right? Fine, what do I care, right? But to inculcate young children with the belief that they can just change their genders if they don't feel well, that's just so evil. There are so many kids who are autistic, they tell them you're gay. And then when they're gay, they tell them, oh, why don't you be trans? Maybe you're trans, right? And so many, so many children are sent down this self-destructive path towards self-hurt and self-harm but it's irreversible once you have the hormone blockers you're irreversibly damaged you cannot you will literally stunt your growth and then you have surgery and that's just mutilation surgery will never heal you in that way it's mutilation you know imagine i thought i were uh imagine i thought i were a duck and i had my arms amputated to replace them with fake wings that would never make me a duck and it would never make me happy. In fact, the fact I would want that would indicate that I have a mental problem and you would need to give me mental treatment to make me stop believing I'm a duck, right? There will be a holy war on Islam. It's not because I want that, but because I foresee that that's just what's going to happen. Muslims are extremely intolerant and aggressive people in Europe. And when they become larger groups, they will wage war on the natives. They will want to kill us and behead us and so on, rape our women. And that's just not going to be allowed. We're going to have to do something about it. So there will be a holy war. We in Europe will have to become just as intolerant, just as aggressive, just as mean, right? Uh, we're going to become just as assertive about our survival and that means we will return to the churches the churches will be full of christians again in the future in europe we will build new churches as well to really train our people to understand you know this is a death struggle and if we don't win they will kill us all and that's just how it is we have to win this hey jonas hey plop egg boy <laughs> Yeah, they always say that both Christianity and Islam come from the Middle East, but, you know, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, the Christian belief system is largely built on top of the European paganisms and European morality. So Catholic morality is really European morality, not Middle Eastern morality. Yeah. No, I'm staying in Europe. Europe is going to be the most interesting in the future. We will have the most number of conflicts here. What about attempts to return to European pre-Christian pagan beliefs like Asatru? Okay, well, that's interesting because technically there was never such a thing as Asatru. It was not a religion. You have basically imagine every little town in Europe had its own version of Odin and uh, Thor and so on. Uh, different names even from one town to the next you would have different names for odin uh and so yeah but of course the general principles were there yeah they had some sort of principles that they believed in uh, i don't i see no harm in in our mythology and so on in our our history no it's something to be preserved of course 
Do you think Europe would accept European Americans migrating to Europe? Well, legally, it's hard to do it, but it is possible. Uh, and I would welcome it if the USA collapses economically, then we would need those people to return here to help us fight our fights and our wars here. We will have, you know, the Holy War. We will have a potential conflict with Africa. If they have, if Africa, imagine Africa has 3 billion people and Europe has 700 million. There's going to be a bit of a problem there, right? Uh, we might need to defend ourselves. We will need all the people we can get, all our own people. Definitely should have the right to return to Europe uh, if they contribute to our uh, our survival. We are the most tolerant and have opened our doors only to be called intolerant and racist. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? That's really interesting. I feel, I feel a lot of people who come to live with us are absolutely paranoid. Uh, they think we are the ones oppressing them when this clearly is not the case. You know, if you allow everybody in, you give them citizenship and, and jobs and, and so on, then you're not oppressing them. You're just not doing that. So. Yeah, the EU has nukes. Yeah, Africa doesn't. But you don't know if Africa is going to work with China. They will have nukes too. So, Yeah, well, I have nothing against paganisms. This is part of our history and should definitely be preserved and cherished. No, I disagree. Christianity is the one thing that ever united Europeans across all languages and ethnicities. We only had Christianity to unite us ever under the Crusades, for example. Uh, the Crusades united Western Europe for the first time. Before that, we were never united. Not even the Romans united us. I disagree to say that Christianity is not a white man's religion. It is now. Wherever, whatever you think, wherever you think it came from, it is now our religion. We shaped it. It is through us that Christianity became what it is today. So it is our religion. I think in the future, only a Christian alliance of Christian peoples will be able to withstand uh, the onslaught that's coming. That's the only thing we will be able to, that, that we can have in the end to fall back on. We just don't have anything else. There is no. Uh, unity between Germans and French people other than the fact that they used to be Christians once, right? So. Goodbye, Martin. You can't say things like that. That's not the reason why Africans are coming to Europe. They're coming to Europe because they have too many children and they can't feed them. So they're sending them here. And we are actually feeding you because we're sending development aid. So it's, it's really, really mean and nasty to even say something like this. Christianity is the glue of Europe and part of our, our united, yeah, part of our identity. Yeah, I kind of agree with that because what else, what else have we got? This is the only thing that ever united us. We will have to work with that for our preservation, for our survival in the long run. You know, we are we are becoming an idiocracy in the West, but also we are becoming late stage Roman Empire, meaning the moral decline is so extreme. I read an article today that a single man from the USA, unmarried, came to Mexico and adopted a child by himself. You could just buy a baby in Mexico as a foreigner, as a single man. Um. Who's going to be sure that that kid will not be abused? It's all so degenerate. Or imagine a two-hour interview between a Russian journalist and Joe Biden. <laughs> man, Joe Biden is a demented fool. Why would you even allow this man to be your, uh, your leader at all? Don't you have to have some kind of a mental fitness test, you know? And then the media keep claiming that Biden's memory is fine when clearly his memory is not fine. The man is not all right. He confuses the presidents of uh, France with the president of, of Mexico or something, you know?
we are being ruled by the lowest common denominators the people who have people with severe mental problems are in charge of the u.s policy and of the western institutions in general it's just so bad Another crusade is in order. Yeah, I was I was actually thinking about this just a few days ago. Uh, a new ninth. There were eight major crusades, if I'm right, and there, this would be the ninth one. Then we'll have another crusade, this time to liberate European cities, not necessarily Jerusalem. We're going to have to liberate Europe. I mean, I think it's insane what we're doing in the West. The hyper diversity means you never have. There are now large places in, in, in Europe where you can simply not be around your own people anymore. You are forced to live with diversity. You never voted for it. it it's, it's harmful. It's psychologically harmful. It's physically harmful. You know, there was this massive study, a meta study about all the negative effects of uh, diversity. And it's just all negative. The only positive is economics. Their elites gain economically from diversity. And that's the only benefit. Everybody else suffers because of it. Really? Ireland situation, yeah. I noticed the Irish people are really rebellious. Like when I look on TikTok for right-wing people or right-wing women or so, you find them usually that they're from Ireland. They are so outspoken about their their, their battles against diversity and immigration. Way more than Dutch Dutch people. The difference is just astonishing. Maybe because the Irish people have been living in opposition to the British for a long time anyway. So they, by nature, they know how to push back and fight back. But uh, other Europeans like Germans, French people, they're very different. They don't really fight back that much, you know. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for the Irish people who are fighting this because they need to keep, uh, sp keep speaking out, you know. Right in a in a highly diverse society, there's no society. Yeah, societal trust goes down. Um, everything goes down. Trust goes down. Crime goes up. You know. Greetings from Denmark. Yeah, just found my channel a few days ago. Great stuff. Yeah, I have been doing this for almost two years now. Uh, but yes, of course, lots of people never heard of me. So, welcome aboard. Maybe white guilt doesn't work on the Irish as it does on others since no colonialism, yeah. And of course, Irish people for a long time weren't considered white anyway. So <laughs> that's because probably because they were Catholic. And you, in order to be white, you had to be Protestant, Christian, Anglo-Saxon. And if you were not that, if you were Catholic, Irish or something, oh, you weren't white, see? I don't know about Project, Ru Project Russia. Caring for your kin is never a sin. No. Well, you know, the idea of national socialism developed in opposition to international socialism. That's the, basically communism, right? Uh, funny, well, you know what's funny? S Stalin, when he, after the World War II, Stalin said he would now wanted to try socialism nationally, which is national socialism. Interesting, huh? You know, uh, von, no, who was it? Von Otto von Bismarck, the German unifier in Prussia. They also did Prussian socialism. Von Bismarck spearheaded this kind of socialism, which is uh, regional socialism or national socialism, effectively. And it became a tremendous success in Prussia, in Germany. The, the people thrived. They were motivated to work hard, right? Yeah, that's too bad. The Israel worship. Yeah, we need to. If if people would worship Europe, if you know, if European type people would worship Europe as much as they worship Israel, then maybe we would be better off. Imagine Europeans had the same attitude about Europe and their many nations as Israeli do about Israel. Wow, wow. <laughs> 
Europe would not have these problems. We would be so strong. Yeah, I spoke about Dr. Carlson uh, on this uh, live stream before. Yeah, in general, I'd say um, Tucker may be simply doing a service to NATO to kind of, you know what I think? Honestly, I think NATO was trying to save face over the fact that they lost the, the East Ukraine. They couldn't capture it. Russia has captured it and that's that. And they needed to save face by doing a friendly interview with uh, Putin. That's how, that's what I think it was about. And, uh, you know, Tucker is a journalist. Not much to say about him other than that. But Putin didn't really disclose too much, you know. He knows a lot more than he's willing to say. Hello, God bless you all. Uh, let's see, I was, uh, I've been streaming for an hour now. Usually I ended up here, but maybe I'll, uh, go on for a little bit more. Uh, if you've never heard of Daniel Natal, of the Daniel Natal show, I'll type it out. That guy has a show on YouTube. It's so good. He explains so much in, in such, uh, uh, such impactful words, you know, it's just weird. Yeah, Putin did let us know, didn't he? There was a clip from uh, from the interview where uh, Putin is like, "Well, I know you're uh, you wanted to join CIA. I'm glad you never did." Something like that. Clearly, letting us know that yeah, <laughs> yeah, Tucker is CIA. CIA did Nord Stream, but they did it with the help of Norwegian divers and divers from Florida. So yeah, um, Norway also benefited from the Nord Stream collapse because Norway also has a lot of natural resources like oil and gas. And they could sell that back to Europe after uh, the explosion. Uh, it's a bit of a extremity. Could a country like Italy or Germany ever align itself with Russia? Yeah, they could if they somehow accept breaking away from the U.S. Maybe at this point the German elites just have too much money parked in the American uh, invest American corporations as investments. They own too much shares in the U.S. But if that were ever to change, if the U.S. economy would collapse, Germany would immediately switch to switch to Russia. They would have no other choice or to starve. So, Europe is too dependent on the U.S. for military, probably, yeah. What's my source that Norway was involved? The guy who uh, who published the original report last year. What was it called? There was this uh, U.S. journalist who came with that, who broke that story. You know. Uh, I don't remember the names of everything. See if I can find it, you know. Seymour Hirsch, that guy, he came up with those, you know. Journalist Seymour Hirsch on his Substack. He had a whole series of articles about it. You know, the thing with uh, the thing with Nord Stream, I saw another article that, that uh, Kim.com retweeted. Uh, they kind of figured out the planes and the vessels involved in the whole sabotage during there was a first there was an exercise they planted the bombs and then three months later or so they detonated the bombs via airplane and sonar buoys sonar buoys on sea that sent a signal down to the explosives and so on and they know exactly about who did it. everybody if you wanted to know who did it you could figure it out and the reason why the west doesn't talk about this well you know is because the u.s did it and we we in europe aren't allowed to say so Right, Norwegian divers were the only ones capable of doing this, yeah. I suppose Norwegian divers have, uh, you know, training in, uh, in North Sea diving, of course, for their oil platforms and so on. Well, the Netherlands is kind of safe, but yeah, there's always neighborhoods where you don't want to go.
my favorite areas in the Netherlands are the natural areas. There's a uh, near uh, near Amsterdam, between Amsterdam and the North Sea. There's this area, uh, a natural park, where you have wild deer and cattle and horses run, roaming free. That's always a place I used to visit a lot. It's called what's it called? I'll look it up for a moment. Zuid-Kennemerland National Park here. I'll type it out here. This this park, I used to go there a lot. It's it's got dunes and a view of the sea. You can also walk to the to the sea as well, to the beach. Yeah, and that's really beautiful there. I also like the city of Maastricht in the south of the Netherlands. It's a very beautiful city. All right, uh, I've been speaking for more than an hour, so I'm gonna log off here and uh, see you on uh, see you on Tuesday.